In our previous video, we created a review and sent that review to the stakeholder account. Now that we have logged into that account, let's go over how this stakeholder is going to interact with the review we sent. Now in the middle of the screen, we can see the list of the work items included in this review. To the right of this list, we can see all of the ways that we can interact with the work items inside of this review. Let's start by approving one of the work items. Now, along with that, we also have the ability to approve all of the work items, reject work items, or reject all the work items. We can see that when we approve this first work item, it is indicated with agreement. Let's go ahead and reject one work item from this request. If we try to select the reject button without adding a comment, the system will give you a notification saying that when work items are rejected, a comment is mandatory. Here, the users can add the comment. Once it's been added, they can go ahead and reject the work item. The approvals and rejections on the work items will be recorded in the feedback area. Here, you can see that this work item has been rejected with the comments made by this user. Users can also provide their comments on the right panel in the Comments tab. Now, once the comment has been added from the Comments tab, it will be recorded without approving or rejecting the work items. The work items that might contain some comments will be indicated with this icon in the View tab. The different stakeholders and initiators of the request can come in and see these comments made by the different users of the request. Once every work item has been actioned upon, either by rejecting or approving, the request will be auto-closed. We are now going to look at the review that we just participated in as a stakeholder and look at it from the initiator's point of view. We have quite a few options that allow us to understand what has happened during the review process. Now for this particular review, we only had a single participant. We can identify which items have been reviewed by that individual by looking at what progress has been made. In the progress column, we see that the first item of the request has been approved by the approval. The second one has been rejected. We can also see that there is a command attached to one of the work items. Now that we have seen what has taken place during the review, we now have the option to take action. So, step one of the review is identifying which feedback item needs action taken. Typically, this is for something like a rejection. And here, we see that this work item has been rejected by this user. We can now go ahead and accept, reject, or observe their feedback. So let's reject this rejection. Here we will provide some comments. The approval of this request will be notified for this review action through an email. So, as we're sending out the work items for review and approval from the backlog or from the review management itself, you also have the ability to send your smart docs that you are creating out for review and approval. Now, if you're sending a document or a smart doc for review, you can see that rich text fields are available and you can review the content of your work items. As you can see, the smart doc was sent as a review request. That means the different stakeholders as well as the users can provide different comments for each work item. Now, users can select a work item in the View tab and provide their comments under the Submit Review option. The review submitted by the stakeholders resides in the feedback section where other stakeholders of this request can provide their review action. Now, users also have the ability to select a text and provide a comment on the selected text. You can select the comment option from the ribbon bar. Once the comment has been provided, it will reside in the comment tab available at the right hand side. On accessing the tab from the right panel, the users can see the text being highlighted on which the comment was made. Once the reviewer has reviewed the entire smart talk and provided the comments where necessary, they can go ahead and mark the review as completed. This indicates that all of the comments have been recorded for this review request.
Once the review has been marked as completed, no further actions can be made to this request. The initiator of the request can see the progress of the review as well as the approval requests that have been sent out. So in the Details tab, they can see that this review request has been marked as completed and a comment indicating the same has been added. Reviews and approvals that are sent from the Smart Docs are also managed in the Version Management table. Here, the users can see that these Smart Docs were sent out for both the review and approval purposes. The initiator can also specify rules when they are sending the work items or Smart Docs for the approval purposes. So here, we are going to add a title for this request and we are going to select our approvers. The work items as well as the smart docs can be approved as a package and can be assigned by checking both of these options in the review request form. Once the request has been sent at the approver's end, you can see that they have the option to approve all or reject all of the work items in one instance. So here, we are going to approve all of the work items. You can provide your credentials to e-sign this approval. The request will be auto-closed since all of the responses have been recorded for each of these requirements and no further updates can be made to this request. The approvals as well as the rejections are recorded at a work item level. So here, if you open one of the work items in the standard Azure DevOps editor, the approval as well as the signature has been recorded under the discussion tab. The initiator of the request can see the progress in the details tab. The progress bar here is indicating that all of the responses have been recorded. This brings us to the end of our video. Thank you for watching.